I'm joined by Bruce Fine. He's a constitutional lawyer and served as Associate Deputy Attorney General under President Reagan. Thanks, thank you so much for your time. Now, tell us more about prison labour, how it's utilised under this law and where, which states? Well, there isn't one uniform law. The United States Constitution permits but does not require any state to require involuntary servitude of those committed uh, because they've uh, been convicted of crime. Uh, at present, there are about uh, 20 states uh, among the 50 who have chosen uh, to invoke that permission and to have some form of involuntary servitude, namely uh, working to produce goods and services without pay. Uh, now, it says, well, is that really slavery? Well, remember, if you're convicted of a crime, you can be sentenced to death. So involuntary servitude is certainly lesser punishment than other punishments that are permitted if you've been convicted of a serious crime. I think that there is a problem um, in even deciding uh, what is involuntary servitude once you get out of the business of having no pay, you know, what level of pay is required in order to make the, the service not involuntary. Uh, it, it's the, the fact is that um, anything above zero, you could say you're getting paid something or other. That may be a reason why there's some hesitation uh, to move forward with these provisions. Uh, they've also, there's argument that work habits are developed uh, by forcing inmates to work, so they're better equipped to deal with society once they're released. Um, I do not believe that this is an issue that is of prime importance during this election. Uh, I don't think it's one that dramatically separates Republicans from Democrats. I think there are arguments on both sides of the aisle here. Um, and I do think that the reason why they're being put on the ballot is to encourage a higher voting turnout amongst minorities who are disproportionately represented in the prison population. Well, let's talk of course, about we that. do some know at the outset that... of these laws. Let's talk about that briefly. You mentioned that some people believe that this kind of labor helps develop work habits that will uh, help inmates after they leave prison. Uh, but since a disproportionate percentage of prison inmates are non-white, many believe prison labor is a form of racism. What's your take on that? Yes, I do think that uh, the origins of the involuntary labor in the southern states was clearly racist. This goes back to the years after uh, the Civil War, Reconstruction, uh, white supremacy. And there's no doubt that at that time, you really didn't even have a system of justice in the South. If you were black, you were, you were a criminal. Uh, and so the involuntary servitude was a way, an indirect way to try to perpetuate slavery. But that was about 100 years ago, and that is gone. But I do think that's one of the reasons why, uh, because the origins are soiled in racism, that they're able even today to brand it in the same capacity, even though obviously the conditions in prisons today are quite dramatically uh, more benign than they were 100 years ago when white supremacy was the rule of the day. You mentioned 20 states, but from what I understand, five states, the, this is still used, and Democrats have put this issue on the ballot in these five states in the form of referendums. You mentioned that it wasn't a divisive issue, but clearly Democrats think it will galvanize some kind of voter turnout if they're actually making some kind of noise about it for this election. Well, that's what they predict. Whether it, they're successful or not uh, is undetermined. Uh, uh, politicians oftentimes uh, make uh, forecasts that prove to be faulty. I'm just saying that that's one of the ways. I mean, it's similar to tactics where uh, people who think that they can get the youth vote turned out if they try to legalize uh, marijuana or some other drugs. Uh, youth very seldom turns out anyway. Uh, whether or not this happens to change, you know, dramatically, uh, voter turnout is still unknown. I, I'm not convinced that it will, but. I can admit I can be wrong, but so can those who are forecasting the other way. You think perhaps bigger issues are on the forefront of people's minds this election, perhaps? Uh, deflation and the interest rates, the mortgage right. rates at 7.5%, I guarantee, are more on the minds than, uh, yeah. than a prison. Bruce Fine, thank you very much for your insight this evening.